Thank you. Can everybody hear me properly? I'm going to assume that's a yes. OK, I see some faces smiling, so I'll say that's a yes. Uh, OK, well, first of all, just to start, a show of hands. How many of you know about service workers and what do they do? OK, that's a fair amount. So then I'm sorry for this talk. I'm going to talk about service workers. Uh, I hope I get to tell you something new or something like that. Um, OK, keeping on. Well, I was told that the way to say hello is Privyat <laughs> OK, that's good, that's good. <laughs> well, um, I'm Rafael Fernandes. Uh, that is my Twitter handle. If you, if you ever feel like call me anything or ask me something, that's how I do it. That's also my GitHub repo uh, name. And uh, that's my website. And yes, the website is done right now. I need to do some maintenance I haven't done in quite some time. I'm sorry for that. It will be up in months, probably. <laughs> OK, well, first of all, I'm Portuguese. This is the city I'm from, Lisboa. If you ever get the chance, I strongly advise you to go there. It's quite a nice city and has a lot of sun, which I noticed there's not a lot here. <laughs> um, yeah, I work in a Dutch company called Non-Dutch. If anyone wants to ask about that later, yeah, feel free to hit me up over there. Uh, I, w I provide consultancy at uh, Rabobank. Uh, so yeah, when people check the transactions, it's kind of what I do in the code. And yeah, that's, that's totally me working overnight over there, sure. Um, so agenda for today. Uh, we're going to talk about what are service workers, for those who still don't know about it. A bit of the philosophy behind them and how should you think when developing your service workers. Um, I'm going to then go into detail about the service worker life cycle so you're up to date with what happens in all, all the time. And then just to give you like some tools and tips that could be useful, especially as a developer. And of course, the, the mandatory Q&A because I'm kind of forced to and be nice to you and all that. So what are service workers? Uh, service worker is something that uh, it's in JavaScript, which is pretty cool. It's like a web worker because it has a different thread, and it exists to create cache. So later, you can uh, s uh, get all your assets, your CSS, HTML, JavaScript, PNGs, images, videos, whatever, uh, stashed. So you can access them offline. It's a different layer of cache that sits between the browser cache and your client. Uh, meaning that if a website, the only thing you do is like providing information and you don't have to communicate with a server for anything else, the website can work 100% offline, which is pretty cool. Um, also, uh, keep in mind that the service worker, much like the web worker, has no access to the DOM, so you can't do any changes on the DOM. Um, it provides you a bit of versioning, meaning that you can't update service workers in real time without screwing things up for your clients, which is really, really cool. I'll talk about it later a bit more. And also, you're allowed to intercept fetch requests. So if you, on your page, put something like script source uh, dash js dash this dot js, you can actually intercept that and return, haha, screw you, if you want to. <laughs> Uh, it is, yeah, like I said, because uh, it works offline, that means the user uh, does not have to be connected to the internet. So not only for offline users, but also for uh, scenarios in which the connection is really, really bad, let's say like 2G, you don't have to talk to the server, you all, all already have your assets with you, and that's really, really useful for your clients. So this is the typical thing right now. You want to ask for an asset, a CSS file, for example, and you talk to the server, and the server responds. So now, with a service worker, you can put it in between. And uh, while you can still ask the server for things, and the service worker will not be there for everything, if you have a post or a get to do, you should still talk to the server. Uh, but now, for your assets, you can actually use a service worker, meaning that, hopefully, except for those things that really need the server, you can get to a situation in which server communication is deleted, and all you have to do is talk to your service worker and it'll provide you everything you need to have. So now, yeah, time for philosophy. Um, how do you have to think when developing with service workers? Because you have to do the, what's called the offline first philosophy. The offline first philosophy will pretty much have to say like, um, cache as much as you want. Keep in mind though, you have a limited amount of cache. 
Uh, it depends on browser vendor. Um, on Chrome right now, what they usually do is you have 10% of the empty disk space. Uh, but keep in mind that the empty disk space could be uh, Samsung Galaxy 2, which then can be quite low. So what Google tells you as a good practice is to assume that you're not going to get more than 50 megabytes. Keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, you should cache your stuff because uh, then the user has at least something. And usually something, even if a bit outdated, is better than nothing at all. Um, meaning that the user is happy in all sorts of different situations, like I listed there, if offline, online, or Li-Fi, which is, I don't know if you guys know the term Li-Fi, is when you're like at the airport and you're supposed to be connected to the Wi-Fi, but it's really, really shitty. So yeah, <laughs> kind of useful. Okay, so now to start implementing, you're talking about service workers per se. First of all, you need to check if the service worker is available. Um, it's quite easy. I also add there to make sure the cache uh, API is available on the website because it's what you need to use to cache stuff. Or you can also cheat, like I usually do, and check here, this website made by the great Jake Archibald. Jake, if you're listening, I love you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's really useful because then you can know uh, where all your browsers are regarding the service work implementation. Uh, rule of thumb, Firefox and uh, Chrome are really, really good right now. And that's what I usually develop with the most. Uh, yeah, so first of all, you need to register your service worker. Yeah, you need to install it. Uh, that's the code for it. It's quite easy. It returns a promise which you can handle if the service worker has been installed or not. It can be failed to install if, for example, you set up files that are kind of corrupted and your service worker gets them and they fail on it or something like that. It really depends on how you implement it. I will show the implementation a bit, little bit later. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's this easy. It's just a few lines of code. One thing to keep in mind, though, is be careful with your scope. So each service worker, when uh, registered, has a scope. Right now, over there, I just have whatever, as my scope, pretty much. But you can actually have multiple service workers. Uh, my colleague Anthony will be talking about that a bit more in depth tomorrow. Uh, meaning that you can actually, if you want, have a service worker for your JS files, service worker for your CSS files, for your images. Or if you're like in a big company, uh, you can have multiple service workers, one for each team, because each team works in a different domain, things like that. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. So OK, yeah, little diagram. Um, when you're installing the service worker for the, for the first time, what's going to happen is that you have the install process, and then it's going to activate. So this is a pretty much it shows you what it does. When it's active, then it does things. Let's go for that in more detail. So the install uh, will happen once per service worker. Keep in mind that when the version changes, it's considered a new service worker, which could uh, end up replacing the old one, but it's still a new one. Uh, it, it starts, it's fired when the service worker executes its first line of JavaScript, meaning that you still have to wait for the boot up time, which kind of depends on the device. Uh, right now, when a decent device would be like 50 to 100 milliseconds time. Um, and this is your opportunity to start caching stuff. You can use this event to, because it's in a different thread, start caching things to ask things for the server. And then when you actually activate, meaning that you can control the browser, uh, then you can give the user things, and the user did not have to wait for the process of getting all the things. So this is the simple code of how to install a service worker. So yeah, uh, keep in mind, the self that I wrote there, it's just a reference to the service worker self. It's, um, it's um, a word, uh, not a word, sorry. Well, it is a word. Duh. Uh, it's a registered word that you can, so you can, the service worker can use to reference itself. So I just wrote there so you guys can understand it. So yeah, you have the install events. What I usually do is I wait until all the cache has been updated, so I then can keep on with my service worker lifecycle. That's what are there. Event, wait until, update cache. It returns a promise. When the promise is fulfilled, keep going. Now, after the install, like I said, the service worker uh, gets, gets activated. That means your service worker is ready to control the clients, meaning that now your page, when you, if you want to, when you do a fetch request, your service worker can actually intercept it and return what's in the cache instead of sending it to the server. Although, because this is JavaScript and you can do pretty much whatever you want, uh, you can actually uh, make the request go to the server anyway. 
that you have that freedom. It really depends on what you want and how you implement it. I will have a little suggestion later for how to do it. Uh, but it is possible, for example, to have a service worker with a preset of cache cached, but let's say you forgot because you're forgetful of things like me. You can actually then, when that happens, call the, serv the server, get the asset, put in the cache, return to the, um, to the plate, to the, to the clients. Meaning that you can actually actively cache things on demand, which is really cool because you can have a service worker with zero cache that starts caching things as the user needs them. Again, the code is so complicated. So, three lines of code. Uh, oh yeah, I almost forgot. This is usually when I delete old caches because you can have old caches, especially if you're updating stuff. Uh, so I usually have that to happen before the service worker is activated to avoid having a cache conflict. Okay, yeah, updates. So you now went through the life cycle of the service worker when it's installed for the first time. You can now update it, wow. So what now happens is that you have an extra step on the service worker lifecycle, which is the waiting process. So you install it, you wait, and then you activate. The waiting is what happens when the previous service worker is still active, and you're waiting for the browser to just kick it away. So the same thing, pretty much the same with the old one. Uh, it's triggered when you, when you have the new version. I'll show you the code later. And you can set up the new cache of new things, and you can update a service worker because your cache has changed, because the service worker logic has changed, whatever you want, or because you feel like it, because it's Sunday, or something like that. Um, yeah. Keeping on then the waiting. Uh, this is the process that guarantees you only have one service worker per scope, so you have no uh, conflicts because it would be quite messy if you have serv several ones interacting uh, with the same clients for looking for different kinds of cache. It could be quite a mess. So yeah, the API is make sure of that. Um, keep in mind, and this is kind of annoying, to be honest as a developer, that sometimes refreshing a tab is not enough. I'll show you in a little bit later how you can do it, because Chrome already has a few tools built in. I'm sorry I don't use the other browsers as much as Chrome. If uh, there's any like fan of any other browser out there, I'm very sorry. I'll look at that in the future. Uh, ooh, people liking my tweets. I forgot to turn this off. I'm sorry. Not very professional. Anyway, uh, after you wait, then that means the old service worker has been kicked off. It means you now are activated. You can take control of the client, do whatever you want, screw up the client, whatever you prefer. This is usually when you delete old cache, like I showed you a little bit ago. If you have indexed DB or some, some local storage things that you need to take care of, this is also the time to do it, normally. Um, and I'm getting really popular, guys. Please stop that. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, please delete old caches because that's going to be an issue for your clients, for your users. And you don't want that. Okay, so for the extra points, it is possible if, let's say for example, somebody screwed up at your company and you have a service worker that's in production that should not be in production, then you can force when you want to skip the waiting phase and take control of the clients ASAP. Uh, so. That is the code for that. Also incredibly complex code. I hope nobody has a really weird picture liking my tweets. That would be kind of bad. <laughs> no, why did I say this? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, so you can skip waiting, so you can take control of the client as soon as possible because you have to. Um, yeah, this is the really cool thing. You can, on the client, whoops, sorry table. You can, on the client, um, update manually via code your service worker. That means it's possible now, if you want to, have like a um, WebSocket connection to the server, and the server tells the client, hey, update your service worker. The, service, uh, the client activates this code, updates the service worker, the service worker gets all the new cache, and the user did not notice anything at all. And it's all in different threads, except for this one, because this is the main thread. But the service worker itself, the new one, will be still a different thread from the old one, get all the assets, get all the stuff, update, and the next time the user refreshes something or gets a new asset, it's going to get the new stuff. And nothing stopped. It's seamless. You can, 
theoretically have an app that updates itself over the time. And yeah, it's really cool. Although, of course, if you have like major CSS that's on the main page, you need to do a refresh to get it. Unless via your code on the main UI, you force that refresh to happen to get the new assets. But yeah, theoretically, you could have something that renews itself. It's kind of like a never-ending never spinning wheel. Kind of cool. OK, yeah, last minute stuff. We're actually getting close to the end. This is going faster than I thought. Um, you can get callbacks for state changes, so you can know in which stage your service worker is at all times. And your client is also able to find out if the service worker state has changed, meaning that also the client can know what the hell is happening with my service worker, or workers, if you have more than one. So sorry for the lot of code, but I kind of had to. Um, Basically, this is how you can know what stage of it is. You register for the uh, several different states. And you have there the installing, waiting, and active process. And you can do stuff in between. This is not really related to service workers. But because we're talking about the offline first functionality, uh, it's something that's really cool to have. You can detect on your main UI threads the if you're online or offline. And that's kind of cool, because then you can tell the user, hey, you're offline, but don't worry. I got you. Because I'm going to give you at least some functionality, not everything. So that's pretty much what like, you would expect from Facebook or Twitter or WhatsApp or something. When you post or send something, but you're offline, it keeps things there. And then when you get online, talks to the server, things get updated, blah, 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 everything's happy, everybody's happy. OK, the extras now. Uh, these are kind of the new things. Uh, the Service Worker API now allows you to send, send things via stream, which can be quite useful if your fetch request is getting a lot of DOM, for example. Because browsers have been parsing DOM for HTML for how 20 years, maybe? More, probably, because I'm not that old. I don't know. I wasn't born yet. Um, and that means then your service worker can, th can send things via stream. So then your UI can start streaming the HTML uh, without waiting for the whole thing. And let's say, for example, you're on Reddit with a billion comments, and your thing is going to get all the comments. Why should a user wait for com comment number a billion minus one? I don't want to say the rest of the numbers. Uh, to read the first comments. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So with this, you can actively render things as they come. So you can see things. And you can have a, well, this would be a first meaningful paint time, but it's kind of akin to that. But yeah, a f uh, like a very fast, meaningful paint time. Also, something that's not here that I only learned yesterday is um, now it's even possible to make two requests concurrent. So if, for example, you're in a very slow device, but they're really fast internet connection, like in this conference, for example. Kind of. <laughs> um, it could actually be faster to get your asset, your HTML or CSS from the server, that can actually boot up your service worker. So that means you can make those two requests concurrent, and whatever comes first is whatever is given to the user. That's pretty cool. And also, yeah, I didn't get too much into the code from um, uh, streaming, but this is a very useful gist. Uh, this, uh, all the slides will be uh, available on my, oh, they're already available on my GitHub repo, so if you guys want to check it out, just it's, it's got service worker crash course and today's date. Yeah, you have all of it there, so you can see it for yourselves. Also, yeah, a bit of shameless self-promotion. Uh, also on my GitHub, if you guys want to feel like trying fiddling around with service workers, I have a little app that I made. Um, it's this one over here. I call it surviving the offline status. Uh, it's a very simple like to-do app. Sorry, let me. Okay, zooming in doesn't help. Cool. This should be a bit better. Yeah. It's a simple uh, to-do list app, so you can add and delete to-dos. Uh, so yeah, Marvin the Martian has done things. It's done. Goodbye. Blah blah blah. But these are all using, um, this is using web workers, IndexedDB, and service workers. 
meaning that this app, if I want to, I can just go here on the network, get offline, do a refresh, and I'm still online. Well, not online, but these are still things it's kind of online. And because of the thing that I told you about detecting the offline and online connectivity, I can do this. Looks like you're online. Cool. Status is green. Well, OK, yeah, now status is green. You're offline. Yeah. Status is red. The user knows what's happening. But the app still works. If I go here and I create an empty to-do, it's here. It works, and I'm offline. Think about like how cool that could be for a normal user. And yeah, also, I have put a lot of comments, a lot of console.logs to whatever is happening with different colors. So you know what's, you know what's happening when you debug the app yourself. So you please, if, if you feel like it, use this as a tool to learn. And yeah, get to know this a little bit better. And experiment and try and do whatever you want. It's free, it's on GitHub, it's got an MIT license. Do whatever you want. I don't care. OK, this has been most of my talk. Uh, this is the Q&A time. So does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Should, yeah, OK, cool, thanks. <laughs> Hi, so thank you for this talk on workers. And the question I have is about debugging. So how do you, do, how do you actually debug service workers? Yes, I can show you that. Yay! People like my talk, cool. Okay. <laughs> so here, for debugging service workers, this is the typical thing. If you want to get on the service worker context, you can set up debugging stuff, because you can go here in your sources. And this is my service worker JS file. And it's here. And you can access the code. And sorry, eh, eh, and nope. Get down. Get down. OK, cool, yeah. So you can, you can get all the code easier. And if you actually want to do stuff on the service worker, OK, I need to get this up a little bit. You can go here, get your service worker context, and then I can do a console.log on my service worker and do stuff. Yeah, which but could you probably set a breakpoint somewhere in the yes. code and check yes. its hits? Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, let me go here on my update cache function and get online and do a full refresh. And it should be hitting this. Yeah, because I got things on my. Uh, it's here, yeah. Why is it not? OK, yeah, it's hitting. So I was doing a full refresh, my bad. The service worker is being installed again, so it's not intercepting the fetches, my bad. I'm stupid. Uh, yeah, but it's debugging. And here you have the context of your service worker. So you can look up your, like I said, the self words. This is the reference for the service worker scope. You can do whatever you want here. All right, thank you. One extra thing for you, though, because I like you. Uh, <laughs> if you go here on application, you can go here on service workers. And again, you can put yourself online. You can force the update on reload. And believe me, as a developer, you, you're reloading. It's really useful. Yay! Or you can bypass stuff. You can actually force the update or unreasure, which is the uninstall for the service worker. They can be uninstalled. Although this is already available on Chrome, normal Chrome, because I'm on Canary right now, this sometimes doesn't work. And what I usually do is this little website, uh, service worker internals. And here, you can have access to all the service workers you have. And there's a lot of things here already. There's a lot of things in production. So yeah, keep in mind that, because those I would be, say, the main tools as a developer to debug stuff. Sorry for the rant. <laughs> <Don't have> <laughs> Any other questions? Wow, was I really conclusive with my stuff? No questions at all. Oh. Awesome. Uh, hi, thank you for your speech. Uh, one little question regarding push notifications. Uh, as far as I know, uh, service workers support push notification. Uh, could you somehow explain briefly how do they work and how are they different from um, browser notification API and uh, 
Uh, are they similar, similar to GCM notifications like in Android or something? They are actually quite, quite similar. I didn't like, go very deep into that. But um, much like your uh, fetch event listener, you can also have event listeners for the push notifications uh, and do yes, what you yes. want. And if you let the push notification follow its natural course, it's going to reach the client. And the client's going to be uh, notified. The cool thing, though, because service workers are installed as a service on your device, that means you don't have to be on your browser to get a push notification, which is really cool. It works like a proper push notification. Well, uh, it's like an Android GCM, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah it works. Cool. For you. the user, it works the exact same way. Great. For us, not so much. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Uh, there was someone wanting to ask a question over there, or was it you? Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your talk. Uh, so, uh, just a simple question. I know that with web workers, we had a problem with uh, serialization of the data between worker and uh, uh, the main thread. For example, we can we wasn't able to move the whole object to web worker. Okay. okay. Uh, just a case. We have a state of application. And, uh, for example, we need to make requests from time to time. That doesn't matter. But uh, service wo worker will need to know about the state of application, for example. OK. For, uh, about the time of last request. So uh, how can we get the access to the main uh, data from the main thread of application in service worker, to, for example, to, uh, to make fetch or not to make fetch to the uh, that you That means when you do a fetch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing the fetch, and for example, I, I would like to do something like a throttle or debouncing for, for a fetch. Yeah. Not to make a lot of requests, but uh, one in five minutes. And, and this uh, timestamp of the last request is stored in the state of uh, in main thread. So I need to get access to the uh, state of application in main thread from the service worker and mm -hmm. to check this date and uh, to make or not to make a request on fetch. OK. Uh, to be honest, I never really delved too much into that. But I do think you can communicate via post message, post message with a service worker. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Yeah, uh, uh, with post message, I thought that there was, with web workers, uh, there was a problem that you can't uh, share the object. You can share just a stringified uh, value. Yeah. So you need to stringify it to pass it yes. and then yes, parse yes, it yes, again. Yes, yes. So the same works for service Unless worker. Unless if all you have to do is throttle connections, you can have that logic on your service worker. And whenever a new fetch is being caught, you can try to pick what's inside of the fetch. Um. And here on the fetch event handler, you can have uh, that like uh, the um, timestamp of the last fest, fe uh, fest uh, fetch, sorry. Fetch. Uh, saved on your service worker code, so you can do that. It's kind of a hack, to be yeah. honest, yeah. but it's it is worker. possible to okay, do it. I see. Thanks. But yeah, but other than that, you are forced to stringify the whole thing. Okay, we have time for a couple of more questions, maybe. Anyone? Anyone? There's oh two yeah. people I, I at see. least. Yep. Throw the microphone. You'll catch it. Hi, thank you for your talk. And I have a question. Uh, when browser deactivates service worker? Uh, when the service worker is, what do you mean by deactivate though? Mm, stops it, remove it, something like that. Because one thing is uninstall, and the other thing is the service worker is idle and thus is not active. And when uh, browser uninstalls it, uh, okay. uh, you can't uninstall it. You can just update or activate it. Yes? True. Uh, the, the browser usually will not uninstall a service worker. What will happen is that the service worker uh, threads will be removed from the, um, the thread pool, meaning that it's not active. But it's not going to be uninstalled. What could happen, though, is that the browser can delete the cache. Okay. Because the service worker itself is not occupying a lot of space. It's just idle. It's not doing anything. And the browser will make it idle whenever nobody is talking to the service worker for quite some time. Okay. But do keep in mind the cache, though, because the always assume that you might not have the cache of your service worker. Uh, it really depends on the browser vendor. For example, uh, I think Chrome goes for the least recently used cache, while some others just delete whatever they want. 
Okay, thank you. And uh, I just want to know uh, if I want to make service workers that will uh, update some data in the uh, background. Uh, can I f uh, have a fear that browser will suddenly remove it? Or it is possible. It, it, it is quite possible. Never assume that your cache or your data is going to be there. Never. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Somebody else over there in the corner. Uh, hi, Rafael. Thank you for your topic. Actually, I have a lot of questions, and I will ask you after. Yeah, and my main question for now: uh, Is it possible uh, such situation uh, that a service worker can uh, work with uh, local storage or index DB or something like this with uh, browser storages? The service worker only has access to the cache storage, which is what we call the service worker cache. It does not have access to index DB or local storage. For that, you have to go to the main UI thread and delve that logic into there. What you can do, however, is when you intercept a request, return stuff to the user, uh, to, the, to the main thread, which will make the main thread do things. Actually, because you can intercept pretty much all requests if you program things that way, you could uh, do like a virtual server on your service worker when your user tries to do like get and a post, that is possible. Okay. But you don't have access to neither the DOM or index DB or other stuff that should be on the main UI thread. Okay, thanks, I got. And uh, is it possible to call uh, some another function which uh, will uh, work with storage? Uh, uh, as use long this, uh, as that function is on your service worker scope, you can do whatever you want. If it's on your main UI thread, then no, because you don't have access to the main UI thread on a service worker, except to deliver the stuff. OK, thank you. Anyone else? Another one. Yay. Uh, is it possible to use uh, one service worker for uh, two tabs? Yes. As long as the tabs are asking for the same stuff on the same domain, or the same scope, your service worker is going to be there. Keep in mind that the service worker is on the browser, not on the server. But it's the service, so it's a different layer. You have your two tabs here, you have your service worker layer here, and you have your browser layer here. Well, browser cache layer kind of thing. So it's possible that these two are going to talk to the same guy. Yeah. So when I will to start uh, service worker if uh, one exists already it will use it yes correct if i for example right now open a new tab for the same the, that little uh, progressive web app that i made it's going to use the same service worker thank you no problem still more questions <laughs> yeah sure sure nice. Audience yeah. engagement, yeah. yeah. That cool. means I did a good job. The <laughs> I question think. from this one uh, young guy, <laughs> uh, but he don't know English. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know Russian, so <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, so like a translator. So, uh, what if I am want to share uh, my code between main thread and uh, service worker? So, if I want to share my assets with the main thread and uh, service worker, would it be? Um, processed once again service worker, I mean, uh, compiled and things like this. Do you know? Yeah, it depends. As long as the service worker has been boot up, means that it's active and running, you don't have to rent, uh, parse anything because it's already available there. So it's going to do whatever you want between how many requests it does. Uh, it's still one thread, though. So if you have two or three or four or a million different tabs, you're going to get that throttleneck, uh, that uh, uh, bottleneck. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm not English. My English is not perfect. <laughs> um, you're going to get that bottleneck, which is you have one thread for that service worker. But truth be told, the most of what the service worker do is deal with cache. And uh, returning cache is very, very fast. Uh, so that normally is not an issue. 
because it's on the browser level, and that typically a user does not have more than a tab on the same site. Thanks.